Good afternoon, fellas. I'm in World 7 at Richie Rich Labs Podcast. So, in this episode today, we're going to talk about the reality that mastering the art of screen capture is a thing. Yes, if you're a techie, you're probably wondering, what the heck? What are you talking about? No, duh, bro. Well, the reality is a lot of people are not tech nerds and they own an Android, sadly, and they go around not knowing they have the Swiss army knife of smartphones. And then people go around with the iPhone and they own a pro model and then that phone is definitely a pro device compared to the needs that they need. They should have gone with a non-pro, but it's okay. It's okay. We live in the world of capitalism. You can afford it, you buy it. But what you cannot afford at this moment, because you don't need to afford it, is the free knowledge I'm going to give you on how to take screenshots on iPad and on iPhone. So for those of you uneducated, which is not your fault, ignorance is a bliss many times, um, you just press the little sleep button at the top and the volume up if you have a Face ID device. Now, of course, on iPhone, that button's not going to be in the top corner. That button is going to be on the side. So you do volume up and the side series sleep to wake button at the same time. And so you do that on the iPad too. And then of course, uh, if you have a keyboard for the non, well, even the video version of this podcast, you're not going to be able to tell, but you do shift command four. And I will not add that to the post edit of this video because I don't have the manpower. Okay. Work life balance. And it's just all that. I just, I just, you know, that's where it's at. So make sure if you're not following this podcast, you follow it and subscribe on the video version on YouTube and hit it with a like. And uh, one day I'll have a Patreon and all that crap so I can slip in a donation. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Uh, But until then, just support me with being here. Appreciate it. So there's something that came to my head when, when I was talking, when whenever I was before filming this, as you know, this is a daily podcast where we just jump ideas around as you're going to work or you're just coming from work. I want to entertain you for just 10 minutes of unedited, raw, unfiltered human emotions and bouncing of ideas from me to you. Um, so what I was thinking a little bit after this is the concept of What's real and what isn't with technology? As you can see, and uh, with the advent of AI, artificial intelligence, which has been around for a little while, how do you know, how do you think we ran YouTube or the Facebook or Google? There's been AI at corporate, even governmental probably levels for a while, more than whenever you came to hear about ChatGPT or Bard from Google that now is called Jiminy. Um, damn man, those guys. Bard did not live long, just like Stadia or Stadia, Stadia. But the, the the reality is, we're going to need something video-wise and image-wise to be able to verify if something was real or is real or isn't. Because what separates an artificial image, besides the quality, right now, of course, but like the Sora with the video AI video and uh, Mid Journey and Dolly and other ones creating images and also all these apps that you can download on the App Store. Like what the heck, are they regulating this crap? The, the thing that pisses me off about AI is cloud AI, but let me revert back so you don't get confused. What regulates all of these AI products? Like the end product, the images, the video. How can you tell in five years when it gets to the point that it's as good or better quality or just exactly copies of the real footage how are you going to be able to tell is it because it's coming from fox news okay is it because it's coming from cnn okay is it because it's coming from facebook or twitter x you know we already struggle to trust these sources. New York Times, Washington Post, all of that. We already struggle to trust these sources, yet now we're in, supposed to trust that whatever's coming out of their mouth and their posting is actually even real. So, 
to combat this, I invite you in the comments to think about it. Think about it as you're going through your days and as technology evolves. Um, don't be left in the dark. Don't be, in this situation, being an ignorant, it's not a bliss. Let me tell you. Um, you don't have to be a programmer to know these things or a computer nerd. You just have to be aware of sort of how it works and find your sources out there like me. Make sure you follow me. <laughs> Self-promotion right there. Got him. Got him, goat. So, guys, educate yourself. And my an idea, a solution that we need to come together. It's all going to be pretty much a society works together to get this done kind of situation here. It's not going to be, oh, I know that's real, that's fake. It's sort of like right now. You know, you have your group that trusts what Fox News says. You have your group that trusts whatever any other media says, CNN, whatever. And, you know, you they say it's truth here and there. And you kind of learn to know when they're lying, when they're not-ish. And then you compare and you make your own thing. So, there's this thing called cryptocurrency and shadow raid legends you probably don't get that joke but cryptocurrency and let's take it down to the fundamentals the technology on it nfts right non -fun non fundable tokens something like that see i'm not even that much of a nerd but trust me i know what i'm talking about the nft comes with the ability for a network to be able to tell if this token that thing is real it's part of the network. Was it made real? Like, really? You know, kind of like if you get Leonardo da Vinci and Leonardo DiCaprio and they both say, this Mona Lisa is real. You saw me paint it and I saw you seeing me painting it and we both agree. And then there's, there, of course, let's add the maid or the dog in the family or the cat. All of these people know it's real because they saw it. They, they all 100% know this. You add little Jimmy from the corner, he comes in, all he has to do is trust that these people are saying the truth. Well, NFTs in their blockchain, environment, technological gibberish crap works sort of like that. They can verify to Jimmy that this is true. And then Jimmy can have data at a data level that will tell him they're not lying. In, in, in general, in really dumb, layman ways, that's how I believe video and images in the future, we're going to be able to, with, as long as we play it smart, with NFT technology-ish blockchain stuff, we're going to be able to tell what's real and what not during an image. And of course, not all images, and I have to end in about a minute and a half because this podcast is supposed to be 10 minutes long, and that's it. Um, we're not going to be able to tell everything, of course, because I believe... The Chinese are going to have their blockchain and their way of verifying their stuff. And then we're going to have ours and the Europeans and everything. And then there's going to be some shared ones and it's going to be a little messy, but it'll be sort of like now just a little more less room for error in black and white as to once you're inside that group, you know, it's real. But anyway, uh, that's my thoughts on it. I invite you to stick around and my channels and social media and I'll be sharing this knowledge with you spraying spreading it out and I hope you enjoyed the content let me know if you have any recommendations and I hope you have the good rest of your day and I'll see you in the next episode I'm in World 7 once more for Richie Rich Labs till next time peace